Hello guys, so we are back. I am back with the corresponding proof of the variance of the betas, okay? So what we have proved till now? We have proved very important identity that I have explained in the last video, the previous video that covariance of y bar comma beta one hat is equal to zero. Now observe the very important identity over here. What is y bar? Y bar is this minus y bar is equal to y like x bar sorry i'm so sorry beta naught hat plus x bar times beta one hat so observe now very carefully that we'll do two equalities over here so variance so let's write this in this format is equal to beta naught hat Okay, so this is bit not hat. So now let's compute two things. Covariance of beta one hat comma beta not hat is what? Actually equal to covariance of beta not beta one hat comma y bar minus x bar beta one hat. So we get that covariance of this is equal to zero because y bar here is why? Because you can write like this. Minus x bar covariance of beta 1 hat, beta 1 hat. You can write it as 0. We have proved it already. Minus x bar times variance of beta 1 hat. Very good. So we have done this. Covariance of beta 1 hat times beta naught hat is equal to minus of x of variance of beta 1 hat. Let's try to understand the variance of beta naught hat. Variance of beta naught hat is actually equal to what? It's actually equal to variance of y bar minus x bar beta 1 hat. It's actually equal to x bar square variance of beta 1 hat. Very good. So therefore, we have sort of done a connection between the variance of beta naught hat with variance of beta one hat and the covariance of beta naught and beta one hat with the beta one hat and beta naught hat with the variance of beta one hat. So therefore, we are only required to find now the variance of beta one hat. That's a very easy task. We will do it right away. So let's go to the next slide. So we need to find variance of beta. My var is very bad. Yes variance of beta 1 hat. If we do that now, what do we get? We get that, observe, remember, that summation of alpha i y i, alpha i equal to x i minus x bar by s x x. Now it's simple stuff. If you do variance of all the y i's are independent, remember that, because epsilon psi are independent, Therefore, it's summation, therefore, their covariance is zero. It will be therefore alpha i square variance of yi. Now, the variance of yi are, is sigma square, right? Because epsilon i follow a variance sigma square. And the xi is a constant. So it turns out it's summation of epsilon i square times sigma square. Sigma square, summation of, therefore, it would be square xi minus x bar whole square by. S X X whole square. Now what is this? It's actually equal to S X X by S X X whole square. So it turns out it's equal to sigma square by S X X. So what do we get? It's actually equal to sigma square by S X and X. Very good. So let's write down the results now. Variance of beta one hat is equal to, we have proved sigma square by S X X. Variance of beta naught hat we have proved what? It's actually equal to, remember, what we have proved over here. It's my x bar time, x bar whole square times variance of beta one hat. It's x bar whole square times sigma square sxx. So this is this part over here. And covariance of beta naught hat and beta one hat is actually equal to what? It's actually equal to 
we have done this. Let's check it right away. It's minus x bar times variance of beta 1 half. It's minus x bar times variance of beta 1 half, that is sigma squared by SXX. Lots of all the three results over here together, they're really beautiful. So yeah, so we are almost towards the end of this small series on simple linear regression. I will end this video here, but there's another surprise for you. We will do some R calculations and stuff to make you understand that what is actually beta naught and what is actually beta one hat and beta naught hat. That will be the next part of the last, last part of this series, okay? Stay tuned, stay blessed, and see you in the next video.